Breaking down any large pieces that I see. Holy shit, that was hot. So I got it all shifted down to the bottom. This is key to having good asparagus. This opens the tube up. You're going to get a lot of moisture in there. It's going to be very tender. And this is actually fresh looking. It did not come from Walmart. It came from Food Lion. If you got this from Walmart, it would look like it does at Food Lion on the day that they throw it away, if that makes sense. I don't know what Walmart's deal is, but it's almost like, I mean, you would think it rides in a FedEx truck bouncing around all day with other items and just getting smashed to pieces and then put out on the, on the shelf to eat. I mean, I just don't understand it. I mean, when I, whenever I go there now, it's all mushed and I mean, it's just like, who wants to eat that crap? Like, we don't have higher standards than that. It's almost like you're trying to say, well, this is okay for a certain group or class of people. It shouldn't be okay for anybody. I'm not trying to be picky and say that I'm too good for certain things, but, you know. I think that should be on the, it's almost like using the customer to, to get the items, um, you know, to have them purchased. Obviously, duh, I mean, that's what a customer does. What I'm saying is instead of getting rid of it and writing it off when they know they shouldn't be selling it, they're still trying to, they're trying to make the customer pay for it, even if they put it on sale. Let me stop bitching. I just <laughs> go to food line. That's all you got to do right there. Bam. Okay, so I've got my asparagus. Now let's dunk this. That's what I'm waiting on. Okay. So, let me rinse. I 
Okay, so those are our spare bits. Always want to rinse them, make sure they're clean. Okay, nice and clean. Okay, what we're gonna do, we're gonna get us some aluminum foil out. now okay perfect so let's get us some aluminum foil and we're going to I had this all dried off it's all your fault I'm just kidding all right so I use this as a template with this little pan it kind of shows me exactly how much foil I need Which it's not rocket science you know but what you want is enough to cover the pan you want enough to be able to stick your asparagus in there still have that's a lot of asparagus it's a good value this is green week we're going all green this week we got some broccoli of course we're going to do macaroni and cheese which kind of makes it a little best a little less quality as far as the health wise but hey this this is a staple man i love macaroni and cheese and if i've got to put broccoli in it to be able to eat it which i really enjoy it this way you're not forcing me to eat it um that's the way i'm going to do it so we're also going to have asparagus so two times the green today everybody hopefully you're excited about that health alert health alert boop, 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 boop. health alert <laughs> oh man yeah i am trying to be healthier man nobody wants to die soon right so we're going to throw a little bit of seasoning on here broccoli is cooking with a vengeance now i just bumped it up and evidently that was in vain because that thing was already on the verge of steaming up the joint and it stinks like cooking broccoli for some reason Ugh. something you get used to i remember that smelling that as a young person like god what is that smell what is that crap no wonder you don't want to eat it if it smells like that but it tastes amazing a little bit of pepper All right, we're gonna make a bowl, like a little trough. Yeah, you can see fine, can't you? Stick this crap to the side over here. Hopefully we won't need it, but you never know. All right, so I just got my cleaning in, bam. Everything's wiped down and clean. Okay, now let's get this centered up. Is that centered in the shot? It is. So there's our asparagus. Now I'm gonna take and toss these around. Now that seasoning is everywhere, now I want to get them back aligned as far as height, relatively, relatively aligned, okay. All right, so we need to get some olive oil in here and go ahead and get this cooking. So I drizzle olive oil back and forth. You don't want it to be slimy and greasy, but you do want to have a little bit in there. Another thing I'm gonna do, Take this lemon. Squeeze the lemon over top. Some fresh squeezed lemon. Oh yeah. Look at that juice. This is gonna be I think if I'm not mistaken, don't hold me to it, but I think it does something to tenderize it too. And I'm literally just doing this off the cuff, but I've you know I just I can tell what goes good together. As far as flavors, I can just tell, you know. That's really what it takes to be a good cook, I think. I mean, you got to have standards too, but my standards could be higher. But just knowing what tastes good together. Having that palate. I mean, if you look, I hate to bring up Chef Ramsay all the time, but he's pretty much like the best, in my opinion. The best to ever do it. And um, what does he do? He puts these guys and gals through taste tests. And that tells him a lot right there about what this person, what kind of food they're going to be able to put out or detect. Like, oh, that tastes like crap. We need to adjust that. Some people don't have a palate. They can't tell the difference. All right, so our broccoli is cooking very well. Let's give you another angle. You've been over there the whole time. All right, bam. I don't even want to take the lid off. Water's so precious, but our broccoli's cooking. I know almost this perfect point to put this in so that it doesn't get all, you know, mushy. We need to go ahead and get this in. All right, let's get this going. 
All right, so we have that going. Now come back over here. Here's what we're gonna do with our asparagus. And make like a bowl or a trough out of it. Let's hit it with a little bit more seasoning. We're almost done with this container anyway. We need to go ahead and get this in there like ASAP. All right, that looks good. And then I gotta hit with some garlic. No, I didn't do that yet. Bam. And maybe so tan and a little bit more oil. Perfect. That might be too much, but better safe than sorry. All right, now I'll come back with a full little piece. Don't need much. There we go. Might even be overkill. But just take and um, connect it with the floor underneath. You have a trough for your asparagus. You connect it here all except for one corner. This is the key right here. Let's turn this around so you can see it. I have everything except for this one corner connected here. <clears throat> Got everything wrapped up and this is my steam port. But you want it to be too extreme. You don't want them to get dried out. I leave a little bitty mouth right there, a little boop, just for that purpose. Okay. Okay. All right. So this is going in the toaster oven. Can you see? tray out and we had it perfectly clean so let's do a little rinse job real quick. I'll show you the reason why I have this over here because you notice we're doing pretty good right as far as like two green items in one meal. I mean if you know me that's like I don't know if that's a new record but it's probably close because you know sometimes I don't always eat the most healthy but I try to do my thing you know what I mean. I try to I appreciate it. You know, sometimes people call you out. I mean, it feels good in a way because that shows they really do care and love you. They care about you and your well-being. But at the same time, it makes you also say, hey, I need to be um, doing a little bit better. I can do better than that. And so greens are good. I mean, I, I've been getting my greens in the form of like a liquid form. So it's good to have some. That spot's been getting on my dang on nerves. It's hard to get to. Sorry. All right, perfect. All right, so this broccoli is real close. Let's take a little quick look at that. Put that towel over here. This broccoli is pretty close. I can just look at it and tell. And let's take a fork and prod it a little bit. Let's fuck with that broccoli. Let's um, poke it around. There we go. Show that broccoli who's boss. <laughs> nah, it doesn't take much convincing for broccoli. It's pretty soft after it's been in there for just a few minutes. And um, I can tell it's not enough water. That's one bad thing, it does consume a whole extra bottle of water when you're making macaroni and cheese. If not, super duper starchy. Nobody likes that. Alright, so let's get our macaroni and cheese open. If you see, if you happen to see my t-shirt in this video, I don't know if you can. I just got off work. I don't care. I didn't take a shower or nothing like that. But I don't know if you have a favorite t-shirt. I'm wearing my favorite t-shirt. It does have a few holes in it. Um, under the arm area, <laughs> it has ripped. But man, it's my favorite shirt. I'm going to show it to you. It's my Nautica shirt. But it does have some ghetto holes here in case you see those holes. And you think, like, what the heck is he wearing? I don't really care. I make that money, and then I get off right, and I do my thing. And that's what I'm doing. Perfect. Get a cheese pouch out. I'm, I'm sure you do this with your cheese pouch too. Right. Jiggle it back and forth. Get it all mixed up. Then I like to get it to one side. Because you see it has these little rivets in here. You see these little, these little waves. It's like a little wavy pattern where they use some kind of device that was serrated or whatever to cut it. 
So you know whenever you see that, that indicates an easy tear usually. All right, boom. So we got this little corner here. I noticed something. You see how it's white right there? It's almost like maybe they went with a different plastic or something's different. It did not used to have this white material in here. I noticed that. I noticed a lot of things. It's almost like it has plastic inside now where it didn't did not used to have that plastic. All right, so we've got that ready. But now we need to, um, yeah, we already added the water. Let's go ahead and get this going. Oh, I know what I need to be doing. Let's get rid of this trash. Let me get you back over here where you can have a better vantage point. Vantage point. Yep, that's a good terminology, right? Okay, sorry, this camera's... I'm using one of Kayla's old shoes as a camera holder, and this one is floppy. Okay, there we go. All right, so we're getting rid of this trash. We got that. The reason why I have this pan out is for this. Sweet Hawaiian crescent rolls. We're going to be putting those in this pan. And we need to keep this in the refrigerator. Okay, what else do we need to do over here? I'm going to use the same plate that I used for the uh, vegetables. Okay, here's what I'm going to do. I don't need that knife here. These slider burgers, you can either um, keep them in their shape like this. Or you can um, uh, push them down. Machine's done. Can you hear that? I like that. It lets you know when it's done. Pretty cool. Alright, so. Here's what I'm going to do. Let's open this Jimmy Dean bacon. Try to cut through the bacon without cutting the ham, which is directly below it. There we go. How about let's not do that? All right, let's get that straight out of the way. this bacon on already to be honest with you but cutting these little sections like this I already have it heating up it shouldn't take that long tell such a huge difference I mean the bacon is very I mean just looks good it's a very attractive bacon as far as bacon goes I'm just used to seeing so much fat look at that thin line of uh I mean, you're getting your money's worth look at that tiny little thin line of fat you're actually getting your money's worth man all that fat it's like you have a ton of daggone grease that that fries off of the bacon and you're left with this little shrivelly fat piece of nothing really but this center cut bacon is a little bit more pricey you gotta be willing to pay for it right you gotta get what you pay for these days that's true that's more true now than ever before in my lifetime if you find a good deal these days there's usually a reason for it. i would stay the hell away from it probably okay our bacon's cooking i'll give you a close-up of that you can watch mr bacon while i um do what i need to do Alright, so we have one, two, three. Alright, 
I might as well cook all this bacon. I mean, it's just a tiny little bit more left over here. Sorry, I bumped it up the high on accident. Well, I did it on tension, but, you know, it kind of got a little too hot too fast. So, maybe I was tripping when it comes to the heat. But here we go. We got this uh, under control now. Who's in control? Your frying pan and your stove? Or you with the fork? The person who's buying the food? Right? I would say that the person who's spending their money, who's working every day to try to make the bacon, bring home the bacon, literally... Is should be in charge of regulating the bacon, right? So I am definitely regulating the bacon right now, and I'm making sure this bacon is going to be cooked properly. You'll see why I have these tiny little strips. I don't know if you can kind of put two and two together. Why would I be cooking bacon right now? You know, I think you can kind of see the bigger picture, can't you? If you can't, I'll give you a little hint right here. That bacon is going to be going on top of these burgers. There's going to be cheese involved too, I promise. We're going to cook the rest of this bacon. We're going to put these burgers on. The macaroni and cheese is almost done. I know what you're thinking. But we got a problem. I mean, I got a solution for that. But we do need to stir. See how those noodles on top weren't um, quite in the water all the way? They're definitely not going to cook at the same level as the ones on the bottom. So good call, Adam. <laughs> good call, self on uh, storage stirring the stirring the pot so we have our broccoli under control the key is don't let your broccoli get mushy before you put your noodles in there you got to put the noodles in there at the right time or else you're gonna have a big pile of mush you don't want that all right so this bacon is cooking a little different too when it has less fat I noticed that and honestly this is the way I remember bacon when I was younger Seems like there's so many people needing the same items that to keep it the same level of quality, they would have to raise the price up tremendously. So they just uh, sacrifice the quality to keep the price low, to keep the price point low. I'm trying to think of how much this center cut bacon was. You don't get very much, you know, for that price, but I'm happy with that price. I mean, I'd rather have lesser amount so that I don't end up with extra unused bacon. Does that make sense? I would rather have a smaller amount in the pack, a lower price point, so that I could choose how much bacon that I want to be, you know, consuming. And not have to consume all this extra bacon just for the simple fact that there was more in the pack. Because it doesn't last too long once you get it open. You need to go ahead and cook it. It's not good to be messing with meats as far as you know expiration dates and having the package open in my opinion just go ahead and get it cooked oh that was not that hurt pretty good all right so not very fatty at all there's probably any grease at all in there but that's good better for your heart all right so while that's doing its thing the bacon i might as well take advantage of this time because i'm wasting time Instead of smashing them out, I'm just going to make these little slider burgers. I don't have the slider buns. That would have been so cool, man. All I have is regular bread, so I might not even do bread. I have the crescent rolls. Right. Don't forget about the crescent rolls. All right. Broccoli's time to bowl over over here. Top it to the side. Can she come running in here? Baby, baby, come running in here. Okay. 
Okay, the macaroni and cheese needs to come off. Give me the milk, please. Alright, put the cheese pack in here. I normally don't do it in the pot like this, but it's just going to work out better tonight. Sounds good, doesn't it? Mm -hmm. Jeez, I gotta sign a contract with Kayla every time. Every time I get to the end of this pack, my contract says I gotta give this over to Kayla and she gets to get this last little bit right here. She's got to have that little bit right there, a little boop. Alright, there you go. Mmm, mm, is that good? Yeah, I know it is. Alright, perfect. Alright, we got the milk out. I'm gonna throw a little milk in here. Alright, put the milk away, please. A tiny little bit of pepper. I need to get to this bacon until. So I'll just transition the bacon to a different eye just to get it off of the heat. See, when you're cooking, you got a lot of stuff going on. That's why a lot of people mess up, man. They can't think about multiple things at one time, you know, so they just focus all their attention on one thing. You got to be able to have three or four different channels and I used to be really good at that when I was younger Have I could have five six different channels going on at the end time and tell you what's going on when you get older life gets more complex mm. wow that's good alright so we have our spoon here let's drop that off now we have our burgers let's do um, Montreal steak Asparagus, let's check them out. Asparagus, we gotta get these burgers, we gotta get these burgers on ASAP. I made a big mess. Bacon takes forever, man. It really does. Let's do a quick rinse. I'm just going to pull the pan off. It's going to get rid of some of that. Watch out. You see that residual? And I'll just take a couple of these paper towels. And there you go. Make sure you get everything. Eyes on. Yeah, I need to. I need to get that bacon done. Can you get me, um, let's see, one, two, three, four pieces of cheese out, sweetheart?
Okay. Let's regulate the heat. A little too hot. I'm leaving the macaroni and cheese alone. Notice I'm not touching it. I'm not taking the lid off. I'm just leaving it alone so it'll stay hot. Just ready to go. The asparagus is about to be ready. And um, I need this bacon to hurry the hell up. I promise it needs to be done like right now. Let's cut that on high. All right, went ahead and got the cheese out too. That's uh, pretty much a no-brainer also. Let it get to room temperature. Let's we'll see if Kayla can count. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. We got ten pieces here. <laughs> I'm just kidding. All right, perfect. So we got that ready to go. These burgers are small. It ain't gonna take them, it's not going to take them that long. And so I want to put some bacon on top and some cheese. Um, I actually saw somebody else's recipe for this. They use cheddar cheese, which I do not have, but it's, um, I have Velveeta Sharp. I mean, I guess this is cheddar. It's like a pasteurized version of cheddar. I don't know if that's the right word for that, but um, yeah. Smushed and processed and pushed down into the form of cheese, but when it comes to Velveeta, it's much higher quality than... You know, any pack you get that just says American cheese on the outside, you don't know what the hell that is. Kraft's not bad. You just got to have a taste for that. Some people really like Kraft a lot. I do with some things, just not the cheese. They'll be me if you please. Alright, so, the burgers are looking good. Look at that. I'm going to keep them on the heat, though. Alright, so these burgers, I'm just going to be flipping. I noticed this one in the middle is obviously getting the most heat. All right, so what I want to do is I'm going to go ahead and flip each one of these so it doesn't burn. 